Hey, hey, all right, what's up, guys? Rudolanel here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial, and today we're looking at a whole new module, and it's a pretty simple module. In fact, it's only got about one function that we kind of care about, one that's actually useful to us. So, uh, what we're going to be looking at today is the glob module, and uh, what the glob module allows us to do is actually get the information, or at least the files that are in your current directory, and it allows us to get these, or at least retrieve the file names in a list, anyway. Way, by using the Unix file, uh, you know, listing scenario thing. So I did a terrible job of explaining that, and you, for those of you that don't know all about the Unix actually style path path name pattern expansion, yada yada yada. Um, I'm going to actually show you guys a little bit of the documentation here. So it's obviously Unix style path name pattern expansion. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to use like wildcards or any other patterns or sets while we're looking for file names inside of our, our current directory. Just like we were kind of typing in the shell an ls command or a dir command. And for those of you that don't even know what that is, hey, that's okay. We're going to go over how we can use this in Python and how we can actually get some nice information with all this stuff because it allows us to look through numbers, look through letter sets, look through um, wildcards with asterisks and even question marks and that sort of thing. And those are kind of the most specific ones. It, things that are expressed with, you know, a question mark, I'm sorry, an asterisk, a question mark, even things denoted with, a, with braces, those being matched. And it actually uses another module that we're going to be looking at very soon, but it does kind of clear things up for us and make things cleaner, uh, us, uh, at least anyway, for us on the programmer side of things. So, uh, okay, enough of me jibber-jabbering. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. If I were to close this, and I've got my Python shell ready for me, what I'm going to do is, from glob, I'm going to go ahead and import glob. Now, glob is the function we're going to be working with, and uh, it's from the module glob. It's kind of easy, and, and all the time, at the same time, you might you may forget, <laughs> you know? Okay, so if we were to look at glob, what we can do is we can pass in a path name, and that's a string, obviously, but what it will do is it will return a list of paths matching a path name pattern. So, uh, okay, let's work with this. I'm going to go ahead and create a new script that I will be playing with, and obviously you can do whatever you'd like, but I think creating a new script is a good idea. I'll save mine as um, listing.python. I'm going to include my shebang line as usual. Um, I'll define a main function just to keep things nice and orderly. Get some boilerplate code in here. And of course, we obviously will want the module glob. Oh, import glob. Just to make things at least somewhat visible for us, I'm going to print hello world. Now if I run this, oh, there's an error in my program. Oh, yep, gonna have to actually run main, sorry. Now it'll just go ahead and tell us hello world. Easy enough. That's that's very, very simple. Okay, so now what we can do is actually use our glob function. So I'm gonna run glob. There it is. That's the syntax, just plain old glob. Now inside of our string, we have some options. Obviously, we can put in any kind of file name, anything like a GIF, anything like any text files, anything with numbers in it, um... That sort of thing. We could even supply a, a completely different path other than the one that we're in right now. And we still have wildcards like asterisks and question marks. So to keep things very, very easy, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put an asterisk here. So there we go. Uh, it should return us everything in my current directory. So if I were to run this... You'll see that nothing actually happens, obviously, because we haven't set this to a variable. Remember, what the glob function actually does is it returns a list or an array of paths that match the specific path name pattern. So we can go ahead and say list equals this, or probably a better name, so it's not considered a keyword, or um, let's say files here. So we can go ahead and do a for loop. So for um, a file in files we can go ahead and just print out a file. Now it's going to return the file name for us, but it doesn't know whether or not it's a directory, that sort of thing, but let's take a look. Let's run this. Now, it'll tell us we've got uh, hello world, our typical declaration thing. We've got docs, we've got piss.mp4. <laughs> that 
that's that's pretty funny. That was a testing video that I did uh, that I did before this C plus um, plus all the other folders and things that I have in here. So there it is. Very quick and easy. All we did was actually use an asterisk that will sort of act as a wildcard. It will return anything in that scenario. So I've got some things here that actually start with a P. I've got multiple things that start with P. And uh, let's go ahead and play with those because those are kind of nice. Let's do uh, P. Obviously, is going to be right in front of that. So if the file name starts with a P, anything afterwards will be actually displayed. And I'm actually going to add a new line and a nice little diver uh, divider for our little introduction thing to appear. So now we can see, hello world, we get our divider, and now it displays any file that has P in front of it, and then the wildcards remaining afterwards. So we've got pissed on MP4, and we have my Python folder. So that's very easy, that's pretty simple. All we've done is actually use this asterisk in conjunction with something else. Now, the question mark, what that will do is it will actually return a single character that's a wildcard rather than a multiple characters like the asterisk does. So if I did P question mark, we probably won't actually get anything. In fact, we get nothing. There are no extra files. But if I were to do uh, any file that worked other than this, we can still play with this the way that we wanted it to. Now, if we look up here in the list of things that I had previously of all of these uh, files, we can go ahead and run this. There's an error in my program because I'm a terrible programmer and need to get a life. Uh, I accidentally closed my server. Okay, great. So now we've got some stuff in here that we're looking for, and actually, we have a file that has .mp4 in it, .mp in it anyway, and we've got another file down here that has .mp in it. So let's play with those. We can use multiple asterisks, obviously, lots a lot of s's, <laughs> and we can use .mp anything with our wildcard, and we can actually go ahead and run this, and we get pissed on MP4 and clerics, I believe. Now, we can actually use this question mark here at the very end, too, as well, because it's only returning a difference of one character. So if I were to run this, we get the exact same output and the same list of files. Okay, that's cool. That 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 works. That does what we wanted to. So uh, now we actually want to be looking at the set or some other things we can do with this though. But my example right now isn't all that isn't all that great. It doesn't have any numbers or any other letters that we can work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do something funky. I'm gonna use Python to actually go ahead and create some of the files that we're gonna be working with. Now, obviously, if you were making your own program that actually is going to be getting what the names of the files are in your current directory or in any other path, that sort of thing, you wouldn't actually create them first. Because then you'd obviously, as the programmer, know what the file names are, where they are, that sort of thing. But for us, we want to be able to, when we're actually using Glob in a real case scenario, we need to be getting these names of the files so we can work with them and open them up and process their contents and yada yada yada. But, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use Python to create some files. So I'm going to define a new function, I'm going to call mine create files, and what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and create a list, I'll call mine files again, and it's going to be obviously a list. And inside it I think I'll have 1.jpg, how about 2.jpg, how about 3.jpg, some simple stuff, you know. And uh, that's, that's decent for now. And what I'm going to do anyway is I'm going to actually do for files in, actually for a file, so we have similar syntax in files, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and actually open up this file or create it, because if we can use the uh, write argument, if we open up a file and actually use write, what it'll do is it'll create that file. We're actually going to need a file handle to be able to control this because we need to close it. In fact, we don't even need a variable. We can just close whatever is returned to us. We can open up the file, and then whatever is returned, we can go ahead and close it with our dot .close function. What this typically is doing is actually doing file handle equals the open thing, and then file handle dot .close. This is just a cleaner and more simple syntax, but for those of you that aren't used to it, it may be kind of awkward. It's, it's whatever you as the programmer want to use. But this is what I'm going to be dealing with in my case. Okay, so... Uh, very simple. We can go ahead and run create files. Hopefully I won't get any errors. Nope, files is not defined. Create files. Where's my error? For a file in files. Okay, I'll call it something different. 
names. Line 25. Ah, I see, I see, I'm sorry. I actually should have set files to something here. For now, I'm just going to call it none, because I don't actually want it to display anything, but we can't iterate through that, so I'm just going to make it an empty list. Okay, so now we've got hello world, yada yada yada, but we've created our files. We can actually go ahead and check this out by using uh, our glob function. So we can do files equals glob. Now, we created things that have a JPEG extension, so we're going to do anything.jpg. Now, if we run this, we get all the things that we had here, including our reminder wall that I actually had as another file up there. So now what I'm going to do is actually use a question mark to show you this. And uh, that's going to replace any any character, but for us it's going to be numbers one, three, two, and we can of course use actually a set of numbers. Now sets obviously are within uh, a brace, are within braces, or things that actually denote or tell you as a programmer that okay this is a set. So it's wrapped inside an opening and obviously a closing bracket or brace, whatever you'd like to call them. Now for numbers we can use zero through nine. And obviously, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's a number, you know? Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. If we run this, we get the exact same output because 1, 3, and 2 are there. And of course, we can change the set to be anything we'd like. We can have it be 1, 2, 3, and uh, 1, 2, and 3 obviously works. We can d say it 1 to 2, we can run this, we get 1 and 2, 3 is not included here, and... We can do a lot of different things with this. We can, of course, even do anything that is not a uh, a number. We can use letters. But let's go ahead and create some things up here that'll actually do this. Let's say, um, aardvark or something. <laughs> aardvark dot bitmap. Let's see, bacon dot bitmap. Let's say. Bicycle. Let's say colors dot mp4. Okay, and uh, crayons dot m. Uh, I don't want to do m. Let's do webm. Okay, works for me. That looks good. Now, if we run this, we can use obviously. Our, quotation, our asterisk and get all the stuff here. Now we've got aardvark in here, we've got crayons, we've got bicycle, and that sort of thing. But, what if we want to actually use our uh, set again? We can use A through Z. I'm going to use capitals first, capital A through capital Z. And we'll do anything, uh, a wild card right after that. Now we've got bacon, aardvark, uh, crayons, and clerks, I believe. And we can, of course, ha have some more... Uh, at least add some more specification list. We can use, have it be a .mp3 file, and of course we've got Kirk's, I believe. It can be a .bitmap file. That works well for us. And uh, let's try something new. We can of course just do A through B, but of course that's going to give us the exact same result, so that's not a good example. But let's change this anyway to lowercase letters. Let's do A through Z we get bicycle.bmp. But if we did anything, we get anything that's lowercase, yada, 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 because we started with any lowercase letters, that sort of thing. But any all these numbers, of course, are not included. You can see that. So we've got some specifications within our set. Now let's try and go through a through Z as an uppercase letter. Will that work? No, that's a bad character range. So let's try a capital A through lowercase z. Now that works, that gets us everything we want. We get docs as lowercase, bacon that's uppercase, and all these other things that are capital and lowercase, and they work obviously within each other because we're looping through both the uppercase and the lowercase sets. We're going capital A through lowercase z. So A through Z is here, and A through Z is here again, but we can skip those and just go A through capital A through lowercase z. Okay, okay, so that works well for us, and uh, that works actually very well for us. I think I've covered just about everything here. If we were to take a look at this once more at the, uh, let's see, our Python glob function, the documentation, let's see what, we give, what we've covered. We can actually take a look at one of their examples and see what they're doing up here. Let's take a look at this. If we, it actually, 
what they did is they imported glob as usual, and they're using the glob function within glob, but we made this a little bit easier by using from glob import glob, so all we have to use is just the glob function. Now doing this, we have 0 through 9, the set that we were talking about, we have another uh, asterisk expansion with a wild card, we do it once more with GIF files, specifying these things, we have another wild card, that's only replacing one character or instance in the string, so okay, and uh, that's all the examples that they give. But you can see there is obviously another function in glob, but I'm not going to cover it because it returns an iterator, and in my opinion, lists are just easier to use, or easier to use, sorry, and glob is kind of a little bit easier to use all by itself because it's just nice, you know? <laughs> but it gives it a little bit more detail of how it works, the OS module, things that we're going to be covering later on, uh, but that's all there is to it. Keep in mind, though, that we can also supply any other path that we want here. If I were to supply my root directory and anything up there, what this is going to do is actually display everything in my root directory. We've got all these things here, and of course, the folders and everything. So what you could do, potentially, is ask your user for a specific folder, and it's going to look for, I don't know, text files within there. So what it does is it'll go into that, obviously, uh, the folder that they type in here, and then it can get any text file. And it could be simple as that. You've got obviously the asterisks that you can use here. You have sets. So you guys have some nice tools here and you're getting it in a way that you can sort of specify the items that you want to retrieve out of listing files in a directory. Okay, that's, uh, that's really all Glob does for you in a nutshell, quick and easy. You have more control over what files you want to get out of listing, listing a directory. <laughs> all right. I think I'm pleased with this. Uh, hopefully you guys understand that creating files is only an example. Use the glob function however you'd like. It can be really handy, but something quick and easy for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, that's all we're going to be taking a look at for the glob function. But thank you very much, guys. I really, really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like the video. It really kind of helps me out. It gets my name out there, and it makes me want to feel like uh, making a bit more video tutorials for you guys. And I really love getting that feeling. Um, and anyway, feeling good about making these things is the best part, so maybe subscribing, maybe leaving some constructive criticism down in the comments, it's, it's whatever you want to do, guys, but all you have is my thanks. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop talking now. Have a great day, guys. Adios.